Hi everybody. We are celebrating a week together and it's been a long one for myself. I don't know about the rest of you. Feel free to chime in. I am Dr. Jordan Leisure. I'm going to move my setup here a little bit. Um, I'm the owner and physician of North Shore Proactive Health, a state-of-the-art wellness clinic. I'm losing my feed in the northern Chicago suburbs. And if you are watching this video, you are a part of our boot camp for stress that we've been doing um, just about a week. And I hope that you have found it beneficial, that you've learned a little bit of something that is going to help you in the immediate future to manage some of the stress that you're dealing with right now. And my long-term goal with this is to help you recognize that the acute stress that we're facing is not uh, necessarily the problem. The problem is the state of health or dis-ease that the majority of us are facing right now. Uh, we are going to hit that topic super hard tomorrow. I'm very excited. And tell your friends. Um, but we're going to discuss especially why um, you know the, the viral numbers are what they are and why it is impacting the subpopulations in the way that it is. Um, but how all of us are going to cope with this currently. I had a good number and make sure obviously again and I've said this a handful of times but let me know um, that you're watching say hello this is a lot more fun when it's interactive for those of you that don't know me when I typically lecture it's to larger groups and that is fantastic because there's feedback and there's energy uh, I got to give props to my friends that own gyms that are teaching classes to no one right now um, because it's it's hard, you know, to talk to yourself. Some of my videos have gone on for like 40 minutes. It's rough. So give me some feedback. Let me know that you're out there. Say hello. Ask questions as we're going along. And if you're watching on replay, same thing. I go back and I read through the questions if there's anything I can answer. If you have hints, tips, or suggestions as I'm going along, please share those as well because this group is not purely for me. It's for you so you can learn. You can learn from each other. You can share. We can commiserate. And maybe we can um, do something other than read our Facebook feed and um, see a lot of propaganda and stuff out there. So we're discussing science in here, which is fun. I had a good number of questions the last couple days about vitamins and supplements. So we are going to talk um, right now about a topic that I could do in my sleep and it's kind of selfish because I am a little bit worn down. Uh, it's been a trying week like I said and I think some of you can relate. But let's, uh, let's hit it and, and, and get to it. So we're talking about vitamins. We're going to discuss why vitamins are important, the different types and grades of vitamins. We're going to discuss different conditions and deficiencies, um, especially pertaining, obviously, to our stress levels and our immune system because they go hand in hand. Um, how to test for deficiencies. And then, of course, um, where should you get going? What should you do? So um, why are vitamins important? Isn't my food uh, health, I eat healthy, isn't my food good enough? And no, unfortunately, if you're watching this from the United States, the quality of our food is very poor. And unfortunately, that goes for organic. And it is not only um, how our food is overly processed these days, but also it's the soil that it's grown in. Um, everything is depleted, unfortunately. And then when things are cooked, they are mass produced. Um, and this is gonna sound kind of funny, but they're not cooked with love. So um, the nutrition that, that you're receiving is not what it needs to be in order to sustain not only your healthy processes, but to compensate for any chronic illnesses that you're dealing with. And also to make up for the fact that the majority of adults in the United States are on at least one prescription medication, many of them multiple. And all of those prescription medications, even if they are helping, helping your symptomatology at the time, they are also actively draining your body of nutrition. Um, a balanced diet is going to help us carry out routine tasks, but it's not going to provide nutrition for longevity and for us to excel. Um, and unfortunately, it's not going to provide nutrition for us to fight disease, which is really important these days. Uh, now, a couple stats on vitamins that, that are a little bit scary. So carrots, uh, the amount of iron in carrots over the 
recent years has decreased up to 40%. Uh, tomatoes used to be really high in calcium and they've had almost a 60% decline. Watermelon, for those of you um, out there consuming watermelon, has had a 70% decrease in riboflavin and cauliflower actually has seen a 33% decrease in vitamin C. Uh, collard greens, which again um, are deep leafy greens, have had you know an 84% loss in magnesium. That's huge. Um, a 52% loss in in potassium. On and on. I could go over these. A 50% loss in vitamin C, thiamine, and riboflavin. Some of our B vitamins. Now, when asked to explain the drop in calcium content observed in commercial corn. The USDA, who we are getting our advice from on how many vitamins we need, what we should be eating, how our food should be consumed. So the USDA replied that a 78% loss in calcium of corn was not significant because, and I quote, no one eats corn for calcium. Well, I hate to tell you, but the majority of us are eating our food for nutrition. So that's a little bit scary that the USDA really doesn't care what the nutritional value is of your food as long as you're consuming something, I guess. Um, organic crops, that's a question I get um, pretty regularly. I posted a few great pictures on the um, Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, so make sure you check those out and shop accordingly. Uh, organic crops are also found to be higher in vitamin C, iron, natural sugars, magnesium, and phosphorus. So that's cool. Uh, they have higher levels of all 21 nutrients than conventionally grown produce. And organically grown spinach, which is one of the Dirty Dozen, lettuce, cabbage, and potatoes, also on the Dirty Dozen, expressed particularly high levels of minerals. So there's another reason that yes, you probably do want to be eating organic. And organic can kind of be a misnomer if you have a local farm and they engage in clean, act, clean um, processes. You know, they're not using chemicals on, on their crops. Do they need to be labeled organic? No, organic costs, it costs quite a bit to be labeled organic to meet all of those criteria. And there are quite a few local farmers and I'm sure that you could look up and you could talk with them and you could ask. And they may not necessarily have that designation, but they do follow those practices. So do a little bit of research. Uh, a few more basics. Um, supplements are regulated by the FDA as food products only. And this is very important if you are currently someone that shops for your supplements on um, in big box stores or let's say, um, on a online retailer that does a lot of delivering pretty much daily to most of our houses, which I'm not gonna mention. Um, really watch, because especially that online retailer, you may not know, and this has nothing to do with the virus that's going on right now, but they actually have fulfillment houses in China, and because they're owned by Amazon, your product will say fulfilled by Amazon. And to me, in my head, you know, I'm in the northern Chicago suburbs, so cool, that means it's coming from Kenosha. But in reality, that may be being fulfilled in China. And if that's a supplement, um, that, that's not working for me. Uh, as far as supplements go, clinical trials are not required. And manufacturers can get away with adding unwanted fillers and binders, which is extremely frightening if you or anyone in your family suffers from a food sensitivity. So you want to be really careful if anyone has issues with soy or corn, um, gluten, of course, things like that dairy even, you'd be surprised at, at what can go into a product. And there are a few stores that sell supplements claiming that they are gluten-free and they can have up to 2% um, of those additives and still call themselves free. Now, if you're someone with a sensitivity or an allergy, you're still gonna have a reaction to that product even in those low, um, low numbers. So be, again, careful in what you're consuming. Now, types of vitamins. There are what's called consumer grade products, and that's what a lot of the patients that we see uh, that are familiar with. So that may be your one a day, your Centrum, vitamins like that, they're very common. Uh, Nature's Made, there are other store brands. They have, uh, have been shown to have quite a few fillers and binders. They have reduced effectiveness. 
they have very poor absorption and quality. Those are the ones that when doctors say vitamins don't work, that's what they're referring to. Those are the ones where you've probably seen like, um, this is a little bit gross, so trigger warning, but you know, a picture of a toilet and there are vitamins in the toilet because they've gone all the way through someone. And that absolutely happens with that grade of product. Uh, they are cheaper synthetic forms of vitamins. My professional opinion is you definitely wanna stay away from this type of product. Uh, now natural is, a, is another category of supplements. Uh, examples are Vega, New Chapter, Whole Foods brands. They are supposed to be free of fillers, artificial colors, and allergens. However, uh, because these products are not regulated by the FDA, they can still have those things in them. They are similar to consumer grade in that they are not tested. There's no independent testing. There's no one going in to see if it says it's 100% vitamin C, it's 1,000 milligrams. There's no one testing that or regulating that. Um, natural is a very common term if you've seen any of the talks that I've done live, I used to have this great thing I would put in of a guy discussing what natural is, and it's a marketing term. Um, you know, you slap a barn on the side of something and it sells really well because it, it resonates with us. We wanna believe that this is natural and it's good for us, and really that's all BS. It's just a, um, it's just a marketing term. So again, be careful if, if this is the, the type of product that you lean towards. Uh, there's also opportunistic brands, and these are some of our multi-level marketing um, products that you've seen out there. They use very sensational um, ideals to sell their product. They have a lot of money behind these marketing, uh, these marketing <laughs> things, and their claims can be false. Um, they're quite expensive, you know, a higher price can, can lead a consumer to believe that everything that they are advertising is real and true, and it may not be. Um, always research the claims if you are a consumer and you're looking to buy that type of product. Find well-documented articles that are backing their brand, not necessarily the type of vitamin that they are selling. Um, examples of these may be Herbalife, New Skin, Thrive, Beachbody, Isogenics, and some other ones. So watch, make sure that you're doing research. If you have a consultant that, if, or if you are a consultant that sells one of these things, make sure that you are doing your due diligence and that you're providing that research to your consumers. Um, because there may be some concerns in what, what is being sold and everyone should know uh, everything that's going on and everything that they're consuming. Um, there were, what is here, one, two, three, four, like 15 different products have been tested and the percentage of authentic product con compared to contaminant um, product substitution and filler varies greatly across the board. So you wanna watch, there can even be variants um, within the same product batch to batch. So that's another issue that we see in products that are not routinely independently tested. So you wanna be really careful. You may take something, you may love it, and the next month you reorder it and you're not experiencing the same effects or you're experiencing some side effects that you weren't before. And you can see that when a product is not tested because it's not gonna be consistent batch to batch. Uh, types of vitamins, as reported by the New York Times, a Canadian research group conducted a study among many different generic brand supplements using DNA testing to verify their ingredients. And over 60% of store brand supplements tested had incorrect labeling and more than 50% of those tested did not even contain the advertised ingredient. So what that means is that they went into stores and if they took 10 bottles uh, off the shelves of some of these bigger, you know, big box stores, and again, I'm not gonna mention uh, store names on here, but 50%, so five out of those 10 bottles didn't contain any of the product. They did this, uh, what I saw most recently was with St. John's wort, which is used for depression. So they took 10 bottles of St. John's wort, five of them had no St. John's wort, two of them actually were full of laxatives. So not only was someone depressed, but they were depressed and in the bathroom all day long, which is very depressing. Um, and that's scary if someone is reliant on something or they're taking a supplement in order to compensate for side effects of one of their prescription medications, you know, having something that has, has nothing in it or a filler and binder can be very confusing to a consumer. <coughs> oh, 
excuse me. Okay, moving on. Now, uh, pharmaceutical grade supplements. Now, again, pharmaceutical is, is just a term, it's a labeling term, but it helps us to uh, separate, the, er, to differentiate how this varies from some of these other store brand products. Now, what is a pharmaceutical grade of vitamin? It is the only supplement that is tested per batch for quality, safety, and bioavailability. Now that does not mean that you know once they decide to go to market, they test once and then they say, okay, we're, we're good to go. They test every single batch that leaves the warehouse. So what that means is, and this is for instance, the supplements that we sell or that we carry in our office, every single batch that comes out, and that's why some of our products are back ordered or some of our products um, have a delay in shipment, is because they are tested and if they're not testing up to specifics or if I say that it is a thousand milligrams of vitamin C and if it's 995, that is not shipping out to my clients. Um, these typically you will find are organic, gluten-free, free of binders, fillers, and allergens. They um, are from natural, again, there's that natural, just kidding. They are natural and patented substances for each mineral. They are actual products uh, they are typically sold by doctors, nutritionists, chiropractors, trainers, and dietitians. And examples of these types would be Numedica, Biogenesis, Innate Choice, Claire Labs, Pure, Thorn, and of course, Salutogenic Life. These are going to be your best option on the market, hands down, no question. In order to read a vitamin label, uh, there's a handful of things you want to look at. You want to look at um, the type of vitamins. So let's say that you are taking um, vitamin C. Now we use uh, pure ascorbic acid in ours. Let's say this one that I'm looking at is um, some ascorbic acid, cornstarch, and lactose. Um, what else do we see? B12, um, methylcobalamin is what we use. The majority of our B vitamins are methylated. Um, this one is riboflavin with mono and diglyceride fatty acids, um, cyanocobalamin. So there's quite a difference in, in labeling product to product. But as a consumer, you should be able to read your labels on your products, on your supplements, just like you would your food, to know what you're consuming and what you're giving to your families. Now, what causes vitamin deficiencies? Because I've also heard I don't need vitamins, um, you know, I, I eat well, I don't have any symptoms, why should I have to take a vitamin? And next to our diets being deficient in vitamins and minerals, there's other ways that we can become vitamin deficient. The number one way is the medications that you're taking right now. Pretty much every medication that you are taking for any chronic condition even if it's, um, let's say, what are people taking right now? Um, allergy medications, Tylenol, Advil, all of that stuff is going to impact your vitamin levels. Some of the top deficiencies that we see uh, in women are anyone on a hormone replacement, so whether that is you're taking estrogen or you're on uh, a birth control pill, it's going to leach your B vitamin, so you absolutely need to be on a B vitamin. If you are taking CoQ10 for any reason, that is, or excuse me, if you're gonna, if you're taking any statins, that's gonna leach CoQ10, so you need to be taking that. Again, no question. If your physician isn't recommending that, they should be, because it's a very well-known common deficiency. Uh, alcohol consumption, which I think a lot of us can relate to uh, during this quarantine, except for me, I haven't had anything in a week. We don't have alcohol in the house, and I'm not buying any. Um, it depletes B vitamins, vitamin C, most minerals, and antioxidants. Uh, allergies and infections also increase our vitamin deficiencies. So making sure that you're taking things like vitamin A, vitamin C, and zinc, among other nutrients, and making sure that, of course, you know, we're talking here about supplements, about supplementing, but making sure your food is very high in these as well is super important. That's why we started with the quality of organics. Um, exposure to air pollutants and other toxins that can deplete your antioxidants. Smoking, of course, depletes antioxidants. So if you yourself are a smoker or if you're in an environment um, with smoking that will deplete your antioxidants. Here's my favorite one, stress. Um, please click the like button if you can relate to having some stress right now. 
but that will deplete all of our nutrients, especially our B vitamins and vitamin C. So that's part of the reason that supplementing with vitamin C these days is gonna help boost your immune system because it is actively being decreased by all of the stress that all of us are experiencing right now. Uh, antidepressants specifically are going to deplete B12 and CoQ10. Anti-inflammatories such as Advil, Motrin, aspirin is going to deplete, again, that vitamin C and that folate. Um, prednisone, cortisone, if you have been experiencing pain. And again, our body naturally releases cortisone when we're stressed. So what are we naturally gonna be depleting, unfortunately, in ourselves? Vitamin D, folate, calcium, magnesium, selenium, zinc, some of our really important critical minerals. And then statins, like I talked before, that CoQ10, B12, DE, folate, vitamin E, um, vitamin A as well. And hormone replacement therapy, again, which is our, our birth control pills or estrogen progesterone combinations, B2, B6, B12, vitamin C, folate, magnesium, zinc, uh, one of the biggest questions that I get is, uh, how about the recommended daily allowance? Or why do your vitamins say that they are you know, 5,000 times the recommended daily allowance? So the recommended daily allowance was only developed to keep people away from having a severe deficiency. Now, what are, are samples of a severe deficiency? It would be like getting rickets. Okay, when was the last time you even heard of anyone developing rickets? Um, or what else, scurvy. Did you remember that? Like pirates get scurvy. Um, and that's from a lack of vitamin C. Um, what else, beriberi is from a lack of thiamine. So that's what those recommendations were made for um, versus ODA, which is the optimal daily allowance. And that's what we work off of in our office. Um, RDA does not address the link between chronic marginal deficiencies and chronic disease. And medical doctors are still utilizing, a, a lot of medical doctors are still utilizing RDA when they're making recommendations to patients, if they ever are advising patients. So the optimum daily allowance is more often utilized by nutritional practitioners and physicians. Um, they've create, they are created using thousands of peer-reviewed journals. What you may find interesting is that the majority of your allopathic physicians and the reason I say this is because, uh, say these, how they're basing the recommendations, is because the majority of allopathic physicians are implementing research that is approximately 10 years old. And I say that because it takes about 10 years for that peer-reviewed research to be implementable on a wide range of, of clinical settings. You'll find that the majority of your functional medicine physicians are working off of a much more updated model. And why is that? I can't answer. Um, I can tell you that in my experience, the functional medicine physicians that I work with and that I have trained with are constantly researching. We're constantly studying. Um, we are seeing what the latest research says, what's working, what's helping patients. And unfortunately, I've had experience with some local allopathic physicians where I have run a test for a patient. It clearly outlines what the patient's problem is. And in lieu of taking time to research and service and provide customer service to that patient, um, the patient is told that the doctor's not familiar with the test and they don't know and they're not interested in finding out, which I think is very sad. So this is one of those times where my brain kind of spirals off. But if you have experienced that with your physician, I want you to remember that your doctors work for you, that you are the, the consumer, um, they work for you, and if you're not getting the answers that you want or you're not getting serviced appropriately, you need to find a different physician. Um, RDA versus ODA varies dramatically. You can take a look at that online. I'll provide um, some uh, I was going to say handouts. I'll provide some details on this so you can look into it and you can see the comparison. But there's quite a difference between the average diet, the RDA, and what the optimal daily allowance is. Now, when it comes to anxiety, which I wanted to hit pretty hard in this talk, it can cause quite a few deficiencies, again, because a lot of individuals that are experiencing anxiety are on some sort of pharmaceutical intervention. It can also be caused 
by different vitamin deficiencies. One of the biggest things we're seeing these days, not only in dealing with this current virus, but with individuals that have anxiety and depression is leaky gut. So one of the best things that you can do is make sure that you're eating clean um, these coming weeks, and obviously my goal is forever, uh, but also taking your probiotics. Uh, zinc deficiency can cause anxiety, magnesium, copper, uh, inositol, that's why you've seen me taking inositol a couple times a day. Chromium is a big one. Um, chromium also helps with blood sugar regulation, which is going to obviously improve um, how your energy is, as well as how your brain is functioning and how your mood is going to be. Uh, some B vitamins, vitamin D and E, carnitine as well. So I'll put this up as a uh, visual on our group so that you can take a look and see how all of these vitamins are related to your mood. Now, how can you test for deficiencies? There are lots of options. There's a handful of labs that we work with. If anyone wants to get into testing in a little more detail, um, maybe we'll do you know a talk on that so you know what your options are. I typically hear patients say, well, I've had my, my blood work done, my, my levels are fine, my doctor said my levels are fine. And again, the majority of physicians are just testing for when you are in that level where you're diagnosed with a chronic disease. If you're trending down, that's a problem. And in a functional medicine office, we're gonna wanna have you do interventions before you're diagnosed as type two diabetic or before you're diagnosed with anxiety or depression or before you're diagnosed with cancer. So come on, there's lots of, lots of improvements that can be made. And we also go off of optimal levels as opposed to, again, um, just standard vitamin levels. I've seen um, vitamin D, for instance, where you know someone has extremely low vitamin D and the medical community thinks that you know like um, like 50 is an acceptable range for vitamin D and ideally you know in my office we like to see somewhere between um, you know like the 70 to 90 range and again um, it th there's so much opportunity for you to feel better for you to um, function better for you to live better. So as always, if you are not feeling as happy, healthy, and energetic as you want to, you have options. So keep looking, keep investigating. Uh, what else can I tell you before we sign off real quick? So some symptoms of nutritional deficiency, they, they vary just like it does for any chronic disease. So muscle cramps, moodiness, um, cracked skin, brittle nails, constipation, of course, poor wound healing, that's a big one. Uh, dry eyes, dry skin, heart palpitations, insomnia, like some of us have experienced. Um, numbness and tingling can also be a sign of deficiency. Now, where to start is what I hear a lot, or what should I be taking? Again, any recommendations that I make on here, please make sure that you discuss with your physician before starting or stopping any vitamins, supplements, or medications. My generic recommendations for every adult is that you need to be on a high quality multivitamin, a probiotic, vitamin D, um, typically magnesium, about 80% of the um, adult population is magnesium deficient. So that's a really easy, good place to start. Um, Omega-3s can be taken as a liquid, a capsule, um, typically a gel cap, and if you are a vegetarian, this is gonna be one of the biggest challenges that you have because vegetarian omega supplements are only absorbed about um, 20% compared to um, a fish oil version of omega. So if you have any leeway, and believe me, I'm an animal lover, so I completely understand um, a meatless lifestyle, but if you have any leeway there and you're able to consume fish oil supplements, I would suggest that, especially for your children, uh, because it's huge in brain development, brain health, and mood health. So you might wanna look into that. Uh, Vitamin D, make sure that you're taking it. Um, it should be a D3 supplement. And I recommend to my patients to take it with K. And of course, just like everything, there are people that should not be taking D. There are people that should not be taking methylated vitamins. There are people um, that will have interactions. So make sure that you investigate that and speak with your physician again. Uh, what else is, is terrific for a lot of people? Um, colostrum. 
So we're discussing leaky gut and healing the gut is a pretty big endeavor. Uh, don't expect to, to start or to engage in an activity such as healing the gut and have it be healed in like two weeks. You know, you, you didn't get to the point that you are with a chronic illness overnight and you're not gonna heal it as quickly as well. So colostrum takes a while. It's very powerful. It is bovine colostrum. It's not human colostrum for all of our moms out there. Um, it's great for conditions such as IBS, colitis, uh, different nutritional deficiencies. It should be taken on an empty stomach in order to heal the gut, but uh, its added benefit is that it increases growth factor. So if you have a child or you yourself are actually trying to gain weight, if you're trying to bulk up, a healthy way to do that is to add colostrum to a protein shake. It's fantastic. Uh, a few dietary recommendations that I can make for everybody. I know we're talking supplements, but I like to keep it balanced is, uh, again, go back and review the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 that I laid out and eat accordingly. Do juicing. If you're juicing, don't, please do not juice like um, 8 to 12 ounces every day and drink that because that's way too much sugar. Juice in moderation, literally, you know, a couple ounces is plenty. Do heavy on your um, vegetables and light on the fruits. They are, again, going to be higher in sugar. Do a variety of colors. Deep leafy greens are fantastic. Throw some ginger in there, uh, some turmeric. That would be terrific. Doing a whey protein shake, if your body can tolerate whey, is also a great way to heal the gut, to get some really good nutrition in. It's fast. It's easy for those of us, once we return to work, um, can make breakfast in the morning and then bring that with. And of course, again, you can add your fruits and vegetables to that. And I'm sort of like a bartender when I make my shake. I do, and, and we make them for Parker as well. We do powdered probiotics. We do liquid omega in the protein shake. We do a powdered green supplement, which is 10 servings of antioxidants. I do frozen spinach organic, cause it's on the dirty dozen, um, frozen broccoli, a couple blueberries, like half a banana. Sometimes if I want like a treat in the evening, I'll use the chocolate whey protein powder and half a banana and some almond butter. And that's kind of like a treat. And if you want it even thicker, if you want that like mouth feel of a milkshake, then add in some avocado. You won't even taste it, but it, it will thicken stuff up. It's fantastic. Uh, apple cider vinegar, if you do that, that is another one. It helps with balancing the acidity of the body which if we are in the right acidic balance, it decreases your incidence of inflammation and disease. I used to keep a bottle when I was training for a figure competition and I don't know why I got out of this habit. I should get back into it. I had a bottle of apple cider vinegar on my bedside and every night I would take a swig of apple cider vinegar. I don't necessarily recommend that to patients because it is acidic and I've read that it can affect the enamel of your teeth. Um, it doesn't taste the best, but honestly, I'd rather do a shot of that than mix it in. You know, Jan, our mother, makes tea and sips it. I can't do that. I can't have that taste going on for an entire eight ounces. So one shot and I'm done. Um, decrease your sugar, of course, and your dairy. Those are all gonna be very inflammatory. And these days, one of the best things you can do to decrease phlegm is to eliminate dairy. It can be challenging. You can do substitutions. You can make your own almond milk at home. You can make your own coconut, that maybe not coconut milk, almond milk. Um, there's plenty of opportunity to make different nut milks and that will help to improve gut health as well. Chia seeds are great. They're high in omega-3s. Beef liver, um, if you can do it. I've seen different recipes where people put it in chili. I think that's how I would have to do it. Um, fruits and vegetables with every meal is great. I always tell my patients to eat something live when you're eating something dead. Makes sense. Think about it. And get outside. I want you to, even if all you do these next couple days, depending on where you are, in Chicago the weather hasn't been great, but go outside and take five deep breaths. If you can do it twice, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, I guarantee it will change your outlook. It will change how you're feeling. And try the breathing exercise that I gave you where you're breathing that air in and you're pushing it down, your belly is expanding, so you're getting that nice clean air all the way through the lungs, that's gonna be huge. And of course, always doing grass-fed 
beef, wild caught fish, prairie raised eggs. Those are gonna be your highest quality um, meats or animal products on the market. So we have a handful of people watching. If you have questions, let me know. That's pretty much everything I had. Um, one thing I didn't talk about was probiotics, and I got this question privately a couple times over the last couple days, but what should people look for in a probiotic? Your, your probiotics are alive bacteria, so the goal in taking a probiotic is that it colonizes the gut. The things that kill the good bacteria in our stomach, again, is going to be stress, which all of us are experiencing, alcohol, which quite a few people are currently experiencing, processed foods, high sugar foods, of course, antibiotics. So if you are, are or have experienced any of those things, you need to be taking a good quality probiotic in order to recolonize your gut. Now that live bacteria is going to be killed by heat. So we're talking about transport, it's going and processing. It's going to be killed by heat, it's going to be killed by water, it's going to be killed by air. So when you're shopping for a probiotic, of course I would love it if you would buy mine, but if you're not, then make sure that you are either purchasing a product that is refrigerated, and that means that it is refrigerated in the warehouse, it is shipped in either a refrigerated truck or it is shipped with ice packs, and then when it arrives either to your door or to the store that you're buying it from, you buy it literally out of a uh, refrigerator and you take it home and you put it in your refrigerator. On the flip side of that, doing a nitrogen pop pack which means that every single pill is stored in nitrogen. So when you go to take your vitamin in the morning, you just pop it out and you take that one. Now, if you look at your product and it's sitting next to you or you have recently purchased one and it doesn't fall into either of those categories, chances are that it is a dead bacteria. That does not make it worthless but it does not make it as potent as a live bacteria. And depending on the type of bacteria, because there are quite a few different strains, so depending on the type and depending on the purpose, it really should fall into one of those former categories that I mentioned. If you are taking a powdered product or if you are taking um, a combination product and it says it has probiotics in it, literally it's like they waved the probiotics around it before they shipped it to you. It does not have, and this is my professional opinion, it does not have the dosage in it that you are requiring to make any substantial difference in your health. Um, so again, it's, it's convenient to, to be taking an all-in-one product, but that does not mean that it has as high of a dose as you're going to need to impact your health. And nowadays, all of us need to be very diligent in how we're spending our money and the products that we're taking, so please make sure that you're smart about, about what you're doing. So, um, that is pretty much everything that I had. If you guys have questions, Hop on, let me know if this was beneficial. Let me know if you learned something. If you've heard contradictory information to what I presented, let me know. Feedback is much appreciated. And otherwise, tomorrow we are gonna discuss, I'm gonna try and do it in the morning. I'll, I'll hopefully give you more than five minutes notice when we're gonna do our live. But we're gonna discuss in detail how the chronic diseases of our nation set us up for the current pandemic that we are experiencing and what we're going to do after or hope what my hopes are that that everyone will do after thank you for tuning in sonia um in order to not only avoid this happening again but to recover from the situation that we've all put ourselves in so if that sounds good stay tuned i'm i'm super excited about it and I hope everybody is doing well out there. As always, if you're having challenges, you know, share here because we are all in the same boat. I spent about half my day doing new marketing for the office. I spent the other half um, trying to apply for this alleged um, small business loan recovery that the government's trying to do because, of course, my student loans don't qualify for... Um, any any of the of this alleged you know student student loan relief 
um, that's going on right now. And in order to balance my sanity and my financial health and my practice and my family, you got to do everything you can every day. So um, stay tuned. And if there's a topic that you want to know more about, please send me a message or post on here. If there's something that you want to discuss, start a discussion with everybody. Because again, that's what this is about. I hope that this is a group where people feel safe to share ideas, to share concerns, to learn a little bit, um, to grow. And you're able to take this information and implement it now and have new habits once we get back to whatever our um, new way of life is. So as always, thank you for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I love you. Have a great night. Stick it out. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.